Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the one-handed mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. We are working on a Troy Built 2665 two-stage self-propelled snow thrower, and I'm going to show you today how to start it and operate it. All right, so the first thing I want to do is show you how to start. Okay, so you want to make sure you have a full tank of fuel. Make sure it's all the way topped off. Okay, I'm going to run through this really quick here. Make sure your oil is checked. Okay, cap off. Make sure it's between the two dots, which this one is. Okay, to start the machine up, you have an electric starter on this side, and I'm going to get to uh, this electric cord right here. The electric cord you want to use is you don't want to use anything heavier than a, um, a I guess you want anything lighter than 14 gauge, 16 gauge is probably the lightest. Um, this is only about 10 feet long. You don't want to go any longer than that because you can draw a lot of amperage and you can hurt the starter if you use a very short or, I mean, a very long cord and a skinny cord. So stay away from the real skinny ones. I'm pretty sure this is, this is I think, a 14 gauge. Sometimes they say it right on the side. But anyway, we're going to plug this into your starter here. Okay, this is your starter. But it's going to plug in right here. And then your other side is going to go make sure you have a plug that's local. This is a recoil starter if you want to use a recoil, but when it's real cold out, these machines definitely like to use the electric starter. It just helps them get going. Okay, so your throttle's here. You got to make sure you're in the half position at least. If you have it all the way in the off position, it is stop. It will not run. Make sure that your on and off button is all the way in. If this button is missing, it will not run. You have a primer valve here. It says usually it's super three times if it's really really cold outside hit this baby four five six times you know you may need a couple more fuel, pumps of uh, fuel in there to get it to go and then you have your choke up here all right so the choke on is right there where it has a little closed butterfly flap right there so choke on is just like that so you want to have a choke on i'm going to prime it only three times because we're not in that cold area it's set at half throttle and now we can go ahead and push the button on the starter and when it starts up you want to make sure that you just run it probably with the choke on a little bit but then you take one disconnect your starter cord but two you're going to take the choke off after it's a little bit warmed up okay so now you want to take the choke down so it smooths out Okay, so again, that's how you start the machine. If you need to watch that again, just rewind the video. Now I'm gonna go on to, now once the machine is started, you pull the plug out, get that out of your way. Just be careful you don't break, the, everybody breaks the uh, the ground prong. Just pull this out straight, wiggle it a little bit, and you'll get it off just fine. Now as far as operating the machine, behind the controls here, we have the left-handed control is your auger. So when you pull, when you push this handle down, it's going to throw your auger on. Okay, this one here is your shoot right and shoot left. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, and then you have your tip on the top of your shoot here. Right here is your your tip forward, tip back, and that that kind of angles the snow which way it's going. You have on the right side handle, you have your drive. This is your self-propelled drive, and you have your gears. You have like six speeds forward, and then you have reverse. You can start in any gear you want, doesn't really matter. All right, as far as these levers go, now once you get it operating, you're gonna notice that when you put down the auger drive, which you should do, and then you put down the self-propelled drive, if you let go of the auger handle, it doesn't go anywhere, because they, they designed that to help you not have to hold both hands on the machine when you're going. Obviously, when you're moving forward, you have to have your hand on the drive system. So that's why they, you always have to have your handle on that to go. Because as soon as you let go of that, you're going to stop driving. But when you put the auger handle down and it's clicked in, you're like, how do I stop it? Well, it's a little sign. They're telling you that they really don't want the auger to stop spinning until you stop driving. And I recommend leave that auger handle down at all times unless you have to stop that auger. The reason being, you can get clogs very easily if you do not let all the snow come out of the snow thrower. So it's a real good idea to just hold that auger down at all times, unless you need to, like if you're throwing it somewhere and you have to stop, well, go ahead and stop. Try to make sure that all the snow is out of the machine before you let go of the auger handle. That'll keep it from getting clogged up and you can smoke a belt very, very quickly. All right, so that's one thing. That, that's why they really want you to have that locked down when you're driving, because they really don't want this not to blow snow when you're driving, because it'll just it'll just bring snow into the front of it and it will get clogged up. So that's pretty much it for the controls. 
If you ever have a problem with snow like not performing as well, okay, one thing that I really, really like to use is a silicone spray. Okay, and you can get CRC, any kind of silicone spray. It's gonna work just fine. And what we do is we spray it up inside here, just like this. And we'll coat all that. And you have to do this before it snows, obviously. And then you come down here and you coat all this. Coat it all on here with a silicone spray. And that will really help the non-stick. I mean, it's, it's a non-stick silicone. Just spray it all over everything and that's great. All right, now that'll also help the snow come out really quickly, fast, it won't stick as much. Uh, always remember wet snow, you may have a problem with that always. If you ever see snow not coming out of here and you have a lot of snow here, stop the machine. Use your, they call this a uh, the clean out handle here. That's what it's used for. This is used to clean out the inside here and use it. You know, I don't like the handle facing the other way. I like the handle facing this way actually. And make sure you turn off the machine before you unclog anything. Okay, I want to show you that they have sear pins. One here, one here, one here, and one here. Now these shear pins are designed to shear. That's why they call them shear pins. So if you want to check to make sure that everything is operating correctly, they should all be intact. If you stop, if you if you have any kind of gravel and you start blowing snow and all of a sudden at some point it doesn't do very well, but it did great like 10 minutes ago, stop the machine, get your glove in here and, and just move all these. If any of them spin all the way around, you know you have a shear pin. And I'll show you a little thing on the back of this machine, which is very nice is that they have a spot back here for extra pins. This, these two holes here are for extra pins. Obviously, this guy doesn't have any, and um, I'm actually going to probably put two in there for him. Uh, but these are the pin holders, and you can just pick them up online, have them ordered to you, you know, have them sent to you, just so you have a couple extra ones. It's a great thing to have on hand, just in case you, you need them, because obviously anybody who has any kind of gravel, or even the snowplow trucks that plow in your front of your driveway, there's a lot of gravelets and cinders that are in that snow. Um, that'll help if, they, if you do shear a pin. Uh, make sure that you also adjust properly your bottom skid shoes, and that's also in the front. So I want to show you in the front here. These skid shoes are right here. Okay, now these skid shoes should be adjusted to your bottom skid plate, which is around here. And this skid plate here should be up off the ground. This one actually is not off the ground right now, and we're going to have to adjust these skid shoes. But what you do is you put a... I usually use a piece of metal or something, a couple quarters, whatever you want to use, put some, put the bottom skid plate up onto the metal and then put it down. And then you can adjust your side skid shoes. And what I can do here, I'll just show you how to do that real quick. Okay, so I'm going to use a couple flat washers. Now make sure you're doing this on very smooth ground. If you're not doing it on asphalt or concrete, it may not work. All right, so I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to put them down right like that, like so, because we want a little bit of an air gap between the bottom of that skid plate and the bottom of your driveway. Okay, so what I'm going to use here, all you need is a, a half inch wrench or a half inch socket, and I'm using my electric ratchet, but I just want to show you that since they're up on the washers there, we now have a little air gap. And then you have to loosen up your side skid shoes them down now these are slotted skid shoes okay and the nice thing about these skid shoes is that you can actually turn them upside down um, and you can wear them along here they're designed to wear these skid shoes are there to wear okay so I'm gonna, after you loosen them up you push the skid shoe down to the ground then you tighten it up you come over to the other side you loosen it up push it down to the ground and you have to make sure your tire pressure is set properly so everything feels right. So remember that. Okay. Now, when we take this off the washers, it's going to put us, it's probably going to give us a little bit of a gap. And I'm going to see if I can get a flashlight in there to show you the gap. Okay, so now we have a gap. Now, a lot of you guys are going to be saying, oh, that's too much of a gap. I don't like the gap. All right, well, if... If you want to wear out your bottom skid plate, then then so be it. You can just use your um, side skid shoes. You can leave them up, and it will give you a perfect, clean driveway. But I think of this way: if if you wear out the bottom skid plate, is a more expensive repair than just replacing your side skid shoes. 
that you're these need to be up a little bit off the ground. And if you have gravel driveways, I suggest hiring out even more because you do not want to suck in gravel. Gravel driveways are tough to use a snowblower on, but I'm sure a lot of you guys have gravel driveways. You just have to make sure that you miss the gravel. So I would have the skid shoes up a lot more than that, or actually skid shoes down, so your, your play is up a little bit. Okay, I knew it was a little more in depth than I wanted to get into as far as how to operate the machine, but these little tips will help you out in the future. I do appreciate everybody watching my video. That pretty much sums it up for how to operate and start this Troy Bill 26 inch Storm 2665. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I do appreciate everybody watching my videos. Please subscribe and I will catch you on the next one.